And before we get into coding, let's first talk about the qualities of a successful modern project. So one of the characteristics would definitely be version control. So this will be something like Git using GitHub or Bitbucket or GitLab. A project will often also have an automated CI CD pipeline. And that basically means that the releases and deployments in the project will be automated. There will also be a heavy focus on code quality. And of course, this is going to bring us to the tooling section. And this is all about using modern tools like ESLint and Prettier to make our code base solid and maintainable. We would also want to enable a wide module support. So not only the common JS syntax that is prevalent among NPM modules, but also support for ES modules, which are popular in front end projects, especially. Besides that, we also want to make sure to document the API that the library or project exposes. And finally, we probably also want to show a few sample demos that people can actually follow in order to set up the project on their own. Now, I've already mentioned an automated CI CD pipeline, so let's actually talk about that aspect in more detail. Now, a successful project will often have a build process. So, what a build process is, is it's essentially an automated sequence of tasks that are going to run on every push, tag, and or release. So every time you push your code to the repo or you tag your code on GitHub or you create a new release and you push it, there's going to be a sequence of tasks that are going to run in response to that action. And oftentimes there's going to be a set of stages that your code is going to go through. The first thing that's going to happen is there's going to be an install stage. So we're going to install all the dependencies. We're then going to lint the code. We're also going to run the test suite in the project. We're then going to build it. We're going to push it to the repo. And finally, we might also want to deploy it to a host. Now, every stage is also going to have a set of associated jobs in it. So for example, during the install stage, we will most often do a clean install using NPM CI. This will also implicitly do a security audit with NPM audit. And then after the install stage, we're going to have a lint stage. And this is when we're going to run a linter. So for example, ESLint or StyleLint and also a formatter like Prettier. Now, after the lint stage, we'll have a test stage. And like I said, this is where we're going to run the test suite, which might be run using the Jest framework or Mocha or Ava. Oftentimes, we will also generate the code coverage for the test suite. So for example, this could be something like NYC, and we might also then push that to CodeCov or CoverOS. Now, after that, there's going to be a build stage. And now this is when we're going to transpile the code. Now, oftentimes, this is going to be Babel, but this might also be TypeScript or Flow. We might also have to pre-process some of our assets. So this will include compiling, auto-prefixing, things like that. So this will often target the SAS files, the less files or even post CSS. Now after that, we might want to uglify the assets. So this will include minifying, mingling and optimizing the assets. So we might as well be using something like uglify.js or terser. Now after that, we're going to be bundling our files. So this will concatenate all the files. This will also oftentimes apply tree shaking to our JavaScript code. And oftentimes this is done using a bundler like Webpack or Rollup or Parcel. Then we might want to compress the files using a format like a zip. And of course, besides that, we might also want to do a bunch of other tasks like copying, deleting or moving files. We might also want to check the bundle size to make sure that it doesn't exceed a set limit. Or we might also want to strip some of the unused code. So for example, TypeScript or flow definitions or something like prop types in React, for example. Now, after that, there's going to be a push stage. Now, this is where we might release our code to GitHub. And we might also want to publish it to NPM or any other registry. And finally, we might have a deploy stage. Now, this one is optional, but it might trigger a deployment to a host. So for example, Heroku or Surge or GitHub pages or any other host. Now, as far as running the jobs and actually executing the tasks in each stage, we might have to use the CLI. So in this case, this would involve using the NPM CLI, or we might also use a task runner. And this was popular back in the days. So for example, people were using Grunt or Gulp or something like Brunch, which is even older. These days, the CLI option is the more popular one. So you'd often see a scripts section in a package JSON file. And this is where you list all of the scripts that you want to run as part of your build process. 